Our second speaker is Elliot Franzek. I hope I pronounced it correctly. Franzek. Franzek? Yeah. Anyway, in, you know, in Polish students point, right, you should know. Um, and the faculty mentor is Aaron Davis. And in biology, I wanted to uh, introduce uh, Elliot. And he's going to talk about his poster, which is the characterization of ACE and ACTN3 genes in Division III college. So, Elliot. All right, first off, before I begin, I would like to acknowledge the USB College of Letters and Science for the UEA grant that funded this research. So I was looking at what Professor Davis and I was the characterization of ACE and actin 3 genes in university college runners. But in my opinion, a better title is, Why Do Some People Run Faster Than Others? And today, I'm going to try to explain that from a genetic standpoint. More and more studies point to genetics as predisposing an individual for athletic performance. In the future, it will be possible to test yourself and know which sports you are most likely to succeed in and which ones you won't. Now we are still many, many years off from being able to do this. But every single year, the database of athletic genes grows. This was the goal of our research, to help expand this database of athletic genes and the effects they have on athletic performance. Specifically, we are looking at the ACE and actin-3 genes. First, I'll talk about what the ACE gene is and the research that already exists on it. And finally, the research that Dr. Davis and I did and what we found. Then I will discuss the actin-3 gene. So when I say the ACE gene, what I'm referring to is a segment of DNA on chromosome number 17 that encodes a protein called angiotensin converting enzyme, or better known as ACE. What this protein does is it causes the vascular constriction of blood vessels, so slight tightening of them. Due to this, there's a slightly less uptake of oxygen by the blood vessels. Their carrying capacity is slightly lower. Thus, when blood vessels are transferring oxygen to the muscles, it is slightly less efficient. This is termed the D allele, a functioning ACE gene. There is a non-functioning ACE gene, though, in many other people. And this is termed the I allele. What happens is this, is that the blood vessels then are a bit more dilated and have a higher oxygen carrying capacity. Thus, a higher oxygen, thus more oxygen is transferred to the muscles per blood vessel. So, it's no surprise then, that when you're running, you need to have the most oxygen uptake that you possibly have. And at the elite level, it's observed that the I allele is considerably overrepresented and the D allele is considerably underrepresented. Dr. Davis and I hypothesized that this same trend seen at the elite level would also be observed at the Division III college level. Here's what the general population spread looks like for the HD. And this is what we found from the cross country runners at Stevens Point. As you can see, it's very similar. There wasn't much of a spread. So we took analysis a step farther. And in conjunction with an athlete's genes, their ACE alleles, we combine it with their race times. And from this data, we constructed this box and whisker pie, as you can see here. It may be a little bit confusing to some people, but that dashed red line that goes across is the average race time. Now the bottom is each event. The II alleles, meaning blood vessels most dilated, are in red. Blue is ID, and the grayish green that you see there is DD. So if you fall above that line, you're performing better than average, below the line is underperforming. What we are looking at is, do the I individuals outperform the D individuals in distance events? In distance, when I say distance events, I mean 3K and above. So you can say a 3K, 5K cross country race, we have data for it. And indeed, a trend is observed. People with the I allele tend to run faster and better than individuals with the DD allele. Now below this, this is not the case. As you can see for the 800, the I, I allele carriers are actually the slowest. It's because oxygen efficiency is more important over the long run than it is in the short run. So based on our data, the ACE gene is a good indicator of an individual's endurance running success. So now that I talked about the ACE gene and endurance running, I will now talk about sprinters and the actin-3 gene effects. So the actin-3 gene is found in chromosome 11 and encodes a protein called alpha-actinin-3, or better known as actin-3. This protein's responsibility is to organize the fast twitch muscle fibers of the skeletal muscle system. And a functioning actin-3 gene is termed the R allele. And individuals with the R allele will have the organized fast twitch muscle fibers. And thus, when they're sprinting, you'll get a slight performance, well, we hypothesize, you'll get a slight performance boost 
because you'll get that extra little bit of power from your skeletal muscles. In people, there is, though, a non-functioning IACN3 gene, and this is termed the X allele. People with the X allele will have disorganized fast twitch muscle fibers. So at the elite level, many studies have found that the R allele is considerably overrepresented and the X allele is considerably underrepresented, which comes really as no surprise. So the R allele confers a competitive advantage. And here's what it looks like in the normal general population, the allele spread. Here's what it looks like with the UWSP sprinters. As you can see, it is in line with what you see at the elite level. The XX allele is considerably underrepresented, and the RR allele is considerably overrepresented. So let me take this analysis a step farther, just as we did for ACE. We compared an individual's gene alleles in comparison with their race times. And from this, we made this box and whisker plot here. The RR individuals are red, blue are RX, and the gray is the XX. Unfortunately, we did not have enough XX individuals, so we cannot make a comparison like we wanted to between the R allele carriers and the XX individuals. So instead, we took a novel approach that no one has really has done before, and we compared RR individuals to RX individuals. And what we found was quite surprising. We found that RR individuals actually do outperform RX individuals for the shortest distance races, the most explosive ones. It's in the 60 and the 100, and already by the 200, you see the performance gap is narrowed. It's because the 60 and the 100 are the most explosive races that are out there for track. And to put this data in perspective, the difference you see at the 60 meter dash, that 3% performance advantage, is the difference between first place at the Olympics and not even qualifying for that race. And all of this, as you can see, as you go up in distance, the actin 3 gene is no longer a predictor of success. It's because it is just for that initial sprint, that very short amount of race distance. So what we found is that RR individuals indeed are more present and it confers a competitive advantage. In summary, the ACE and ACTIN-3 genes are associated with elite performance. Individuals who have this at the elite level are much more likely to compete better than those with the bad genes. We hypothesize that this same phenomenon observed at the elite level would be observed at the D3 level. And indeed, this is what we found. Not only were the beneficial alleles more prevalent, but they also correlated to faster race times. In conclusion, the ACE gene predisposes an individual for endurance success, and the actin-3 gene predisposes an individual for sprinting success. In the future, we would like to expand our study to many other colleges and their track teams in order to further support our conclusion and our findings. Someday, we will be able to test your genes and know which sports and events you are most likely to succeed in. I hope you now understand, for at least partially from a genetic standpoint, why some people run faster than others. And the moral of this story is, if you want to be fast, you need to choose the right parents. Thank you. Anyway, having said that, congratulations.